A lot of people ask me about molding planes. Can't imagine why. But it turns out I do know a few things about them, including some interesting facts that you can tell right away just by looking at them. First, have a look at the wedge. Planes made in the 1700s tend to have a more circular shape on the end, while planes made in the 1800s or later feature a more elliptical shape. The edges of the body can also tell you something about its age. In the 1700s, they tended to chamfer or bevel the edges as compared to the rounder edges of the 1800s and later. If your plane has a very complex profile, like this one, it's probably American-made. Europeans tended to favor the age-old technique of combining two or more simple profiles to create a complex molding, while Americans liked one big plane to do the job, even if they had to tie a rope from the plane to an apprentice and have him tow it across the board like a mule. Of course, that doesn't mean all simple profiles are European-made. We have those here, too. But a sure sign of a European plane is a very dark patina. The English like to coat their planes with a lot of linseed oil, which turns dark and rancid over time. But the best way to investigate the history of a plane is to look at the maker's mark. An internet search may tell you where it was made, by whom, and sometimes when. But don't confuse a maker's mark with an owner's mark. In many workshops, the workers were required to emboss their names on the ends of their planes with a stamp, just like this one. These stamps are quite rare, but the impressions they made are common on molding planes, and I think they're a great part of the tool's history. If you're lucky, you may be able to track down information about the maker and the owner. But chances are, the craftsman who owned your plane has been long forgotten, because when he died, his ungrateful kids sold his tools to buy pot and get something pierced, like your kids will do when you're gone. If you have a question you'd like answered, send us an email using the contact link on our website at stumpynubs.com or post it on our Facebook page or Twitter feed. Be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, which is always full of woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.